Hey, let's learn how to make faster and better 3D plots in Python. And while we're at it, let's explore some cost functions for machine learning models. Hello everybody, my name is Dan. Welcome to Machine Learning and Data Science Open Source Spotlight. Today I'm gonna cover Plotly, which is an interactive graphing package for Python. It's based on JavaScript, very similar to Bokeh, which I covered last week, but I like using Plotly specifically for 3D plots. In addition to that, I'm going to analyze some cost functions for machine learning models and I'm going to use Plotly in order to visualize them and understand them better. I'm going to work with very simple data today. It's a classic linear regression task. We want to predict the maximum temperature of a certain day given the minimum temperature of the same day. So if we plot it, it seems like this. And you can clearly see we can fit a line here. So in machine learning, we want to find the best line, the optimal line, meaning the error should be minimum. So we choose a cost function or, or error function. In this case, the most popular one will be the mean square error. And we want to minimize this distance between the actual points and the predictions of our model. I'm sure you can solve this easily, but let's visualize this problem. So I'm defining the cost function here, the MSE and I'm defining here the linear model. This will take on intercept and the slope and we'll apply it on all the data points to make predictions. And now I'm gonna do a brute force grid search uh, for a couple of intercept slope pairs. So I'm gonna run between minus 200 and 200 with a step of five. So I'm gonna take a look of all these combinations and I'm gonna try them as my line parameters I'm gonna calculate the cost of these lines and let's visualize the pattern of this cons function. So as I've said before, I'm choosing Plotly to do these uh, 3D plots. Uh, Matlablib has a native solution, the MPL toolkits. I think it's slow and cumbersome to use and Plotly is a much better alternative. The main difference is in how you construct the grid in order to plot. For example, in matplotlib, if you want to make a 3D plot, you have to make some kind of mesh grid of your original X and Y axes and then apply some function on it to get your corresponding Z values. And then you pass X and Y as these matrices and Z the actual values, the result as an array. But this becomes a real problem when Z can't be computed from nice element-wise operations which are conveniently broadcasted by NumPy on these matrices. In Plotly, it works a bit differently and this is why I think the API here is much better because in Plotly, you pass Z, the actual values, as the mesh grid. So Z is a matrix containing all the relevant values on the surface plot. So you can actually plot the, the surface plot just with Z and you pass x and y as the original values just as the text, just as the legend to the axis so you can know what were the original values. So this is much more convenient uh, in my opinion when z is computed in a rather more complicated way. Another nice feature here is that you can add a contour plot to your surface plot to get even more information out of your uh, chart and this is a very nice a touch in my opinion and as with all plotting libraries you can update the layout of the figure afterwards change the title the ti the axis titles the shape of the figure and let's look at the result so you can see it was computed very quickly and we can zoom in and out and it's very responsive and looks nice. We can see the contour plot on the bottom. We can see it up as well. And we see the axis, the corresponding uh, slope and intercepts, and their combination and the resulting cost of this model. Uh, so you see this tooltip here. We can see for each intercept and slope what was the corresponding cost value for that model. And we have, you see the green loop. So we have some kind of equipotential marker to see uh, what kind of other coordinates have the same value of the cost function. And 
so we can see from this cost function that when we do gradient descent, if we start from a random point of uh, certain parameters, we take steps in the direction of the gradient in order to reach uh, the minimum amount of cost possible. So for in this case, it's this point here, and this is the optimal solution, uh, which has minimized the cost. As a bonus, let's try and visualize the cost function of a neural network. So I designed Mininet. Mininet is the simplest neural network you can think of because uh, we can only plot 3D uh, charts like this when we have two parameters. So we need, uh, we are creatures which can only see in three dimensions. So we need two dimensions as the parameter and one dimension as the cost. So we need a very simple neural network which has only uh, two parameters. So what we do here, so I define Mininet, so we make one linear operation on our inputs, we make a, an activation transformation with a tan h, and then make another linear transformation. I didn't add a bias, so it's not a perfect network, but this is the best we can do with two parameters. Okay, so we repeat the same process. We are gonna uh, compute the cost for this model for a brute force search on different pairs of the parameters available here and then we're gonna plot it with plotly and let's take a look at the surface plot that are, is the result so this looks quite a bit different it's not the same bow like convex shape we had for uh, the linear model we have two minima and and you see this the green mark really helps to see that it's the same value in both of these uh, minimum minimum points and this is a very interesting result it happens because of the activation functions and you may know that saddle points are a problem when optimizing neural networks and we can really see it here that for a lot of points in this cost function surface there are points where uh, going in the direction of one parameter doesn't change the cost function at all so a specific parameter is in a, a local minima and this is because the thresholding effect of the tnh so for very negative values you will get minus one and for very positive values we get plus one and even if you change the value a little bit you still don't change your result so i think it's nice to see this kind of effects and I'm a firm believer of seeing is believing and I hope it sheds a little bit of light on how the cost function saddle points look like. And you can also see the need for gradient clipping. So in many cases we can be in a certain point and a very tiny step can throw you off to a very uh, big cost and if the learning rate or gradient clipping is not applied, you can get thrown off and have a lot of noise in your optimization. So I think it's nice to see here in this very, very simple uh, neural network visualization. I hope you've enjoyed this video on Plotly and cost function visualizations. If you've learned something new, please help me reach more people by liking, commenting, or sharing this video. I do this completely for free and the only thing I want to achieve here is reaching out to more people, getting to know more data professionals and see how I can contribute in this field. I do this every week, so I hope you will follow and I'll see you then.